All right. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rahab, Rakah, Kadash. Next, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well, who are being a great example for us younger brothers that's coming into this truth and to the Akim that are pushing this word out in truth, faith, and sincerity. I want to give many salutations and many blessings to your household and the Akwathium that are listening to you. I would like to say Shalom. And uh, I'm going to get into this quick lesson. It's basically a history lesson of how these red Hebrew Edomites came over here and uh, basically shedded the blood of the natives, man. You know, and took the land, stole the land, built up on it, all kinds of crap, man. And uh, this video is basically a re-upload of the channel visual that I'm subscribed to. They put out some pretty good content, but I kind of found this video kind of fit for me to uh, pull it and re-upload it and put some scripture with it and uh basically i'm gonna be stopping it from time to time to make my points so uh i want to start off in the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 63 through 66 and it read and it shall come to pass that as the lord rejoice over you to do you good and to multiply you so the lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught and ye shall be plucked from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee and thou shalt fear day and night and shall have none assurance of thy life so all right with that being said let's get into the video We are the matriarchal teacher one Lakota Oyate of the Osheti Shakoan, an indigenous First Nation people of Turtle Island, the continent known as North America. In togetherness with our buffalo relatives, the Tatanka Oyate, we once roamed freely across the vast prairies and hills of the northern Great Plains until the occupation of these lands by the expanding United States Empire. Born over thousands of years, our sacred way of life taught us to live, love, and thrive, qualities that endure in our survival today. As we move beyond seven generations in our unyielding struggle to resist genocide, our matriarchal grandmothers are taking back their strength once again. In togetherness with Lakota warriors and people, we speak out for accountability and change to end the atrocities that keep us from healing our nation. Only by understanding our story can our people live free once again. To our relatives from the four directions, we ask you to listen, not only with your ears, but with your hearts. From the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in the place you know as South Dakota, this is our story. We 
did not ask you, white men, to come here. We do not want your civilization. We would live as our fathers did, and their fathers before them. All right. Now, I'm going to stop it right there. Even though he said he didn't want the so-called white man, <laughs> they didn't ask the so-called white man to come here. But see, by this time, you natives, man, you tribe of Gad, you know, y'all were still basically under the curses. So that's why the so-called white man came over here and did y'all like he did. So I'm going to get into, uh, I'm still in the book, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, but I'm going to get 49 and 50. And it reads, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Yeah, man, because like the Negroes, man, when we got off the slave ships, you know, we were speaking still in the Lashua and Kodash, the ancient Hebrew. And they beat us, man. They, they beat us. They did everything to us and made us learn their English language. Verse 50, a nation of fair countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Yeah, man, they killed you know, old people, women and children, you know, all that stuff, man. This land is just defiled with all kinds of blood, man. So let's get it. Let's finish. In 1492, the indigenous Arawak people of the Caribbean islands encountered Christopher Columbus of Spain. Columbus wrote in his log, They would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. Columbus proceeded to unleash a reign of terror unlike anything seen before. When he was finished, 8 million Arawaks, virtually the entire native population of Hispanolia, had been exterminated by torture, murder, forced labor, starvation, disease, and despair. Huh. So, Colum I'm going to stop it right there right quick. Because uh, I want to get this reign of terror that Columbus did to y'all, man. The reign of terror is in the scriptures, man. You know, the Lord ordained this reign of terror. For y'all, man. So it's gonna be in uh the book of Leviticus. Uh what I want. Book of Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 16. And it reads, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning or ag. Thou shalt consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And so like you and ye shall sow your seed in vain for your enemy shall eat it and i will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies they that hate you shall reign over you and ye shall flee when none pursueth you and if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me then i will punish you seven times more for your sins yeah, man, because basically, man, the Lord Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh shot. He getting y'all to, he trying to get y'all to humble y'all self, man, and come back to him, man. I mean, what more could you ask for, man? You got the, you, slack you. You know, you know, the, the, the heavenly father, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh shot. He created you people, man. And here it is, y'all worshiping other gods and stuff like that, man. So it ain't no better way. Cause the heavenly father, he can't come down from out from, 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 you know, from the, from, from the heavenly realm and put a belt on you people, man. He going to work off something in the spirit, man. And send the so-called white man, which is his sword. And he, and the so-called white man going to come and do something to you, man. All right, let's finish. Thomas's atrocities with cross and sword were justified by the Christian doctrine of divine discovery and set religious and legal precedent for the invasion and genocide of America's indigenous peoples for the next 500 years and beyond. By 1650, a precarious relationship between the First Nations of the East Coast of North America and New England colonists was collapsing into slaughter and enslavement of Native people by settlers who wanted more land and wealth. We find that most of the English colonies sanctioned and encouraged scalping Indians. In 1776, the United States birthed the first 13 states on land taken through the ethnic cleansing of dozens of eastern seaboard tribes. The Declaration of Independence further enshrined the belief of Euro-American settler supremacy by declaring native peoples to be merciless Indian savages. 
In 1787, the United States adopted its constitution. Article 6 established treaties as the supreme law of the land. Despite this supreme law, treaties with sovereign native nations became slippery promises, easily broken when convenient. Oh. And so I'm going to stop it right there about those treaties, man, that were easily broken when convenient. I'm going to get into uh, I want the book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and write grievousness which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. That's exactly what you people did, man. You read Hebrew Edomites, man. When you came over here, you took the natives lands and you didn't know that they were the chosen people of God. You know, y'all did them some harmful atrocious, atrocious acts, man. And, and hey, you got to pay for them, man. Plain and simple. Let's go. In 1823, in the case of Johnson and Graham Lessie v. McIntosh, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that the First Nation people's right of occupancy was subordinate to the United States' divine right of discovery. The United States has unequivocally agreed that discovery gave an exclusive right to extinguish the Indian title of occupancy. This landmark ruling provided legal cover for governmental policies that would claim white Euro-Christian supremacy as justification for stealing indigenous lands and for the genocide of native peoples. In 1849, the California Gold Rush triggered the mass Western migration of settlers, putting them in direct conflict with existing indigenous nations. In 1851, anxious to protect white settlers on their way to California and to avoid a full-scale war with the Lakota and our allies, the United States requested the Treaty of Fort Laramie with the Sioux and other northern Great Plains nations. Six Sioux men signed the treaty, which recognized the Lakota nation's sovereignty over a vast territory amounting to approximately 5% of the continental United States. With the end of the Civil War in 1865, the United States sent its war-hardened soldiers on a crusade to settle the West. Led by the growing dogma of manifest destiny, the U.S. claimed the God-given right to expand its borders from sea to shiny sea. Damn any man who sympathizes with Indians. I have come to kill Indians and believe it is right and honorable to use any means under God's heaven to kill them. In 1868, unable to defeat the warriors of the Sioux, Cheyenne, and Arapaho nations fighting to protect our lands and people, for the first time in its history, the United States appealed for peace and drafted the second Treaty of Fort Laramie. The treaty established the Great Sioux Reservation, including the Black Hills and unceded Indian Territory, to be set apart for the absolute and undisturbed use and occupation of the Indians, and that no white person or persons shall be permitted to settle upon or occupy any portion of the Indian Territory. Unable to defeat our free Lakota people with military might, the U.S. government increased the use of deceptive practices to subvert our matriarchal system deceptive and practices. to create the appearance of agreement when our lands and rights were stolen. Does. The devil deceived. It is my purpose to utterly exterminate the Sioux. They are to be treated as maniacs or wild beasts and by no means as people with whom treaties or compromise can be made. Just three years later, in 1871, the U.S. government ceased to recognize Indian nations as sovereign and independent with the passage of the Indian Appropriation Act. This legislation legalized the theft of our treaty-protected lands and further threatened our way of life with our buffalo relatives. The civilization of the Indians is impossible while the buffalo remained upon the plains. The mass slaughter of our buffalo relatives, the Tatanko Oyate, lasted from 1871 until 1910. In just the first seven years, buffalo hunters decimated the great herds of buffalo nearly to extinction. The U.S. Army encouraged the slaughter by providing free ammunition and supplies. Look at that, Israel. In 1873 alone, 
buffalo hunters massacred more than 1.5 million buffalo. Let me stop it right there. They murdered 1.5 million buffaloes. Man, let me get more scripture, man. I'm still in the book of Deuteronomy, man, chapter 28, because these are still the curses, you know, that we are under until our Savior, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, comes to get us, man. We still under the curses. That's why it's important for us right now, man, to get back under the wing of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah for his protection, man, because we got we got great slaughter coming, man, you know. And this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thy, thou shalt have none to rescue them. Jump down to 51. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thine or flock, Salakia, or the increase of thy kind or flock, of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. I mean, basically, man, the curses speak for themselves, man. The curses identify us, man. These curses that we're under in Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 28, man, identify who the people are, man. Let's go. As planned, our people became increasingly dependent on the U.S. government for even the most basic of human needs, like food, clothing, and shelter. Food, clothing, and shelter. In 1874, after illegally trespassing on Lakota territory, General George Custer publicly announced the discovery of gold in the Pahasapa, the Black Hills. As intended, the announcement unleashed a flood of miners and prospectors into the Great Sioux Reservation in violation of the 1868 treaty. In 1875, the U.S. demanded we sell the entire Black Hills region. We refused. The U.S. declared this an act of war and launched a massive invasion of our lands to annihilate our people. Nothing short of their annihilation will get the Black Hills from them. On the 25th of June, 1876, in the Battle of the Greasy Grass, or Little Bighorn, the Sioux Nation, along with our Cheyenne and Arapaho relatives, won a great victory over General Custer and the elite 7th Cavalry. On that day, we defeated the might of the U.S. Army and took their flag. Seeking revenge for their defeat, the U.S. Army directed Colonel Ronald McKenzie to unleash total war. U.S. forces went from village to village, killing women, children, and ponies, and destroying teepees, clothing, blankets, and food supplies. The U.S. then launched a sell or starve policy and withheld rations to coerce our people to sell the Black Hills and to relinquish our sovereign rights. These inhuman atrocities forced the surrender of many Lakota people to the U.S. agencies by spring of 1877. Despite being on the brink of starvation, few of our people signed the agreement to cede the Black Hills. When the paper was signed by Red Cloud, Spotted Tail, and others to give up the Black Hills, the majority of the Indians of the Teton Sioux tribe were not there, and they never consented to giving up the Black Hills, and never gave those chiefs permission or authority to sell or give up the Black Hills. Unable to obtain the required three-fourths consent, the U.S. seized the Black Hills with an act of Congress, in violation of the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie. Incensed by the illegal seizure, negotiator for the U.S., Henry Benjamin Whipple, wrote, I know of no other instance in history where a great nation has so shamefully violated its oath. Our country must forever bear the disgrace and suffer the retribution of its wrongdoings. Our children's children will tell the sad story in hushed tones and wonder how their fathers dared so to trample on justice and trifle with God. Come. And I'm going to stop it right there because I want to get more scripture, man. This is the book of Isaiah. Uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people, 
the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. This is for you red Hebrew Edomites. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, said the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and the remnant, and son and nephew, said the Lord. You know, great slaughter was prepared for us for disobeying. You know, so what more are you red Hebrew Edomites, man? You're going to get judgment too, man. Let's go. After breaking treaties, seizing native lands, and destroying our system of life, the U.S. government introduced another element of the genocide of Turtle Island's indigenous people. Assimilation. Kill the Indian, save the man. In the 1880s, the U.S. government joined forces with Christian and Catholic missionaries to steal native children, as young as two years old, from their families, ship them to schools far away, burn their clothes, and cut their hair, deprive them of loving family contact for years, and use mental and physical abuse to force their assimilation into American society and the Christian religion. Come on, man. And I'm going to stop it right there, man. To take the children away from their mothers and fathers, man, and to force them into assimilation, man, and give them Christianity, man. That's why you got the dude, uh, what's his name? Mike, Mike Servin. You know, he pop locking and dropping, man, in the name of Jesus Christ, man. A idol, man. Jesus Christ is an idol, man. You know, us here at Great Millstone, you know, us hope we hoping that we a part of the elect, man. It's going to be saved up out of this hellhole, man. You know, we coming in the name of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, man. Yahweh being the father, man. And Yahweh Shah being the son, man. And I know Jesus Christ, man. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is his name, man. And uh, I'm going to get Deuteronomy because we still in the curses, man. I'm going to get Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. Meaning no might to get them back, man. You ain't have no might to get them back, man. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, man. That's what these red Hebrew Edomite devils came to do to us, man. To oppress us and crush us always, man. Let's go. There are but two goals for the Indians. Civilization or annihilation. In 1883, the U.S. created the Code of Indian Offenses to criminalize our culture and spiritual practices such as the Sundance, the giveaway, gifts for the bride, beasts, and medicine men. Punishments included fines, hard labor, imprisonment, and withheld rations. In 1885, the U.S. Congress continued its assault on tribal sovereignty by passing the Major Crimes Act, which unilaterally extended U.S. jurisdiction over major crimes into sovereign Lakota territory. In 1887, the U.S. Congress approved the General Allotment Act to divide communal land of the Great Sioux Reservation into individual parcels of privately owned property assigned to tribal members. Our people had no concept of individual ownership of our Mother Earth. The Indian must be imbued with the exalting egotism of American civilization so that he will say, I, instead of we, and this is mine, instead of this is ours. Two years later in 1889, in violation of the 1868 Treaty of Fort Laramie, the U.S. Congress passed an act to divide the Great Sioux Reservation into five separate and smaller reservations, including the Pine Ridge Reservation. The U.S. government opened the remaining 11 million acres of Sioux Treaty territory for public purchase, including sacred sites and burial grounds our people used for thousands of years. Having wronged them for centuries, we had better, in order to protect our civilization, followed up by one more wrong, and wipe these untamed and untamable creatures from the face of the earth. Huh. And so, <laughs> that's 
that's basically what the red Hebrew Edomite devils wanted to do, man. They wanted to wipe us off the face of the earth, man. But guess what Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah said, man. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances. Yeah, man, because we fell away from keeping the commandments, man, and have not kept them. Return unto me, ret meaning the, the laws, statutes, and the commandments, because the laws are not done away with, man. You know, these churches want to say the laws are done away with, you know, but but what are the law? They are the commandments of God, man. And, and if the laws are done away with, that means you can't sin no more, man. You know, because what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law, man. So that means you can't sin anymore. If the laws are done away with, man, these churches, man, they, they corrupt, man. The, you Israelites, man, y'all need to come out of these churches, man. And they're just that. And it's continue reading return unto me and i will return unto you said the lord of hosts but ye said wherein shall we return to the law statutes and the commandments man let's go by 1890 our lakota people once powerful and free were entirely dependent on the u.s government the u.s had forcibly removed our people from our homeland confined them to reservations cut their rations by half stolen our children and decimated the great herds of our buffalo relatives. On the 29th of December, 500 soldiers of the U.S. Army's 7th Cavalry Regiment surrounded Bigfoot's band of about 350 Lakota people at Wounded Knee Creek, and along with four rapid-fire Gatling guns, massacred 312 of our men, women, and children. Come, huh. Esau was blessed with that sword, man. That's why we came to defeat Esau with his sword, man. Ain't no way you can tap into Esau's blessing, man, to defeat him, man. We got to get these, come back to the law, statutes, and the commandments so we can get spiritual powers to defeat this devil, man. Our people know Wounded Knee as a massacre. Yup. Come. Huh. And I'm going to stop it right there, man, because I want more scriptural proof, man. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, better known as a rock, you know. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12. Verse 10, then I'm going to jump down to 16. But it says, verse 10, never trust thy enemy. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So jump down to 16. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit, man. Look at this, man. He threw you into a pit, man. The U.S. government calls it a battle. 23 U.S. troops were awarded the Medal of Honor. Man, let me stop it right there. Something. Because I forgot to get the rest of this uh, verse 16, man. So I'm going to read verse 16 over. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood, man. He wasn't satisfied with just blood, man. He wanted the land. He wanted. He want. He wanted the land. He wanted the fruit of the land. He wanted the cattle. He wanted the gold, man. All this he wanted, man. He wasn't just satisfied with the blood, man. Let's go. Else died here in the bloody mud and was buried in the blizzard. A people's dreams died here. It was a beautiful dream. The nation's hoop is broken and scattered. <laughs> There is no center any longer, and the sacred tree is dead. In 1903, the U.S. Supreme Court decision Lone Wolf v. Hitchcock secured U.S. hedge money over indigenous peoples by granting Congress unlimited authority to break Indian treaties unilaterally, to sell treaty-protected land, and to regulate all aspects of Indian affairs without the consent of indigenous nations. In 1934, President Franklin D. Roosevelt and the U.S. Congress passed the Indian Reorganization Act, the IRA. In a misguided attempt to fix the indigenous nations, the U.S. deliberately had broken. Despite opposition from traditional elders and in violation of the 1868 treaty, John Collier, Commissioner of Indian Affairs, and Harold Ickes, 
Secretary of Interior illegally approved the IRA Oglala Sioux Tribal Council and Constitution for the Pine Ridge Reservation with the support of only 1,348 tribal members out of an estimated 12,000 Oglala Lakota people. Most of our people were ineligible, unable, or unwilling to cast a vote. In the 1960s and 70s, U.S. Indian Health Services, IHS, physicians performed involuntary sterilizations on thousands of Lakota women aged 15 to 44. IHS facilities singled out full-blood Lakota women for sterilization procedures. On the 27th of February, 1973, 300 American Indian movement activists from more than 75 tribes began occupying Wounded Knee, the site of the massacre 83 years earlier. Traditional elders from Pine Ridge sought to exercise our people's natural right to sovereignty and to take a stand against the corruption of the illegal Oglala Sioux tribe government. Continuing the 150-year war on the Lakota people, federal authorities escalated the occupation of Wounded Knee into armed conflict with a force of U.S. Marshals, FBI agents, National Guard personnel, armored personnel carriers mounted with machine guns, snipers and helicopters, semi and fully automatic assault rifles, grenade launchers, tear gas, jets for aerial photographs, and paramilitary personnel. The occupation ended after 71 days, when a local Lakota man was killed by a federal sniper and both sides agreed to disarm. From 1973 to 1976, in the aftermath of the Wounded Knee takeover, the U.S. government backed Oglala Sioux Tribe President Dick Wilson and his guardians of our Oglala Nation Paramilitary Vigilante Force, nicknamed Goons, inflicted the reign of terror on Pine Ridge. More than 60 grassroots activists, traditional full-blood Lakota people, and our supporters were assassinated. 300 were harassed and beaten. 562 were arrested, of which only 15 were convicted of crimes. During that time, the murder rate on the Pine Ridge Reservation soared to 170 per 100,000, the highest in the world at that time. In 1980, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the 1877 seizure of the Black Hills was illegal, but did not return the land to our people, offering money instead. To this day, we refuse to accept the monetary compensation offered for the theft of sacred Bahasapa. In 2000, at a ceremony acknowledging the 175th anniversary of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Assistant Secretary of the BIA, Kevin Gover, admitted, from the very oh yeah before he go to talking man i just want to give a couple of more scriptures out before i end this thing man because we come we at the end of the video right now so i'm gonna get a few more scriptures then i'm gonna let the rest of this play out then that's gonna be that man all right so uh the book of deuteronomy still uh chapter seven verse six verses six through nine for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all that are upon the face of the earth, man. So reparation, man, we don't want reparation, man. We ready for our king to come back, man, and put you devils into submission, man. Because our father is a man that he shall not lie, man. If he say he coming back for us, man, he coming back for us, man. And that's what I believe truly in the bottom of my heart, man. You know, let's get verse seven. You know, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen for the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So like you're from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And then, man, you know, this is modern day Egypt. Because when you look at the back of the $1 bill, man, what do you see? You see a pyramid, man. And what did the children of Israel build for Pharaoh, man? They built up pyramids, man. The children of Israel built up Egypt, man. You know, we walked into Egypt the first time, our forefathers. Then we walked out, you know. So he said, and there you shall... 
go into Egypt again with ships. You know, no other people on the face of the planet went into slavery on ships, but except the so-called black people, man, and you natives, man, and you Hispanics, man. You know, we make up the 12 tribes of Israel, man. So, and uh, I want to get another scripture. Uh, let's see. Number, the book of book of Numbers. Let's see. Book of Numbers, chapter 35. Slack you. Book of Numbers, chapter 35, verses 33 through 34. So you shall not pollute the land wherein ye are. For you red Hebrew Edomites, because y'all came and polluted this land with the blood of the natives because they were already here, man, possessing this land, man. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are. For blood, it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not the defile therefore the land slack you. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell, for I the Lord dwell among the children of Israel. Man, the Lord, you know, even the Lord, even though the Lord sent his people into slavery and captivity, man, he still dwell with them, man. Look at uh, who, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, man, when they was tossed in the fiery furnace, man. The Lord would, the Lord dwell with them, man. You know, man, you people, y'all got a price to pay, man. You know, y'all got a price to pay, man. And uh, from there, I'm going to get uh, Romans... The book of Romans, chapter 11. It's like it. And I'm going to end it out with this scripture here. I'm going to let the rest of the video play. And I'm going to end it out so time won't run out on me. Uh, okay. And this further proves that the Lord still dwells with Israel, man. You know, this is the book of Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. I say then, have God casted away, Salakia. So like I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. You know, and what does forbid mean? Never, you know. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. You know, Paul wrote Paul wrote the book of Romans, you know what I'm saying? Paul was an Israelite man, a so-called black man, you know? And verses two, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew, because he knew us from the beginning, man. The scriptures say he knew us before he even put us in our mother's womb, man. You know, what ye not, what the scriptures said of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God and against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life, you know. But in other words, man, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man, he has not forsaken his people, man. You, you know, you people come with that replacement doctrine. Uh, you know, that his people rejected him. So the word and, and the promises went to the Gentiles, man. You people don't understand what the word Gentile mean, man. If you look up the word Gentile, it means, uh, roughly paraphrasing the word Gentile means, uh, usually a non-Israelite. So if that means usually a non-Israelite, that mean it could, a Gentile could also mean an Israelite. It all depends on when it is used, man. So, with that being said, man, I'm going to let the rest of this video play, man, and I'm going to say Shalawan. Beginning, the Office of Indian Affairs was an instrument by which the United States enforced its ambition against the Indian nations and the Indian people who stood in its path. It must be acknowledged that the deliberate spread of disease, the decimation of the mighty bison herds, the use of the poison alcohol to destroy mind and body, and the cowardly killing of women and children made for tragedy on a scale so ghastly 
that it cannot be dismissed as merely the inevitable consequence of the clash of competing ways of life. Though he described the multitude of ways the U.S. government has devastated indigenous peoples and nations, he failed to admit the truth. Genocidal warfare continues today. Come.